Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> well, at least I didn't pick the melody one that I said that one. Okay. This meeting of the Preservation Board is now in order. I'll call the roll. Commissioner Richardson, are you here? Here. Okay, then. Uh, we will skip till we have more commissioners. Um, the approval of the minutes. Are there changes to today's agenda? Yes, the last agenda item has been deferred. Okay. Agenda <coughs> item F. Okay. We'll do that. Commissioner, are you okay with this agenda otherwise? I am. Okay. So let's begin then with a preliminary review of 1024 Mississippi. Okay, almost exactly a year ago, this project came to the Preservation Board as a preliminary review to construct an outdoor patio cover, and I guess what I'm terming an art outdoor kitchen, as well as a fence, rear yard of this property at 1024 Mississippi in the Lockett Square Historic District. That's the site. You can see there's an existing driveway. Part of the problem with it is the driveway still needs to remain use, usable. Therefore, the whole um, side yard cannot be screened with a um, fence. So this is looking down the street from the west. And there's the site. And a straight on view down the curb cut to the location of the proposed patio cover. And this is it. It's very similar to what you saw last year, except that the outdoor kitchen oh, just a second. Well, the green area is the outdoor kitchen, and the red area I mean sorry, the red area is the outdoor kitchen, and that has moved. It was originally, if any of you recall, up at the building line of the street. It's now been moved towards the north side of the property. Um, this is the previous submission, so you can see that it's there in the, at the street in front of the um, proposed patio cover. And this is the current proposal, which will have a metal standing seam roof, and it does wrap around an existing historic brick addition. This was the previous proposal, which had a glass roof. And that is looking um, at directly west at the proposed new structure. So that structure has not changed substantially except in detail. Um, this is the patio kitchen, which will be brick faced and located away from the street. Um, we don't feel that that's particularly an issue. Example of the roof material proposed. Now, a year ago, the board approved the fence, which is wrought iron with brick posts. It approved the kitchen at its original proposed location, and it denied the patio cover because it was not based on a historic model example, as is required by the historic standards. Um, however, there really isn't an available model example that will give the property owner what they're looking for, which is a covered outdoor space. The staff has proposed a pergola-like structure, and I say pergola-like meaning that it would could have a flat roof to it, but it would appear to be a garden structure and be much more lighter in detail. And that I can't say that there is a model example for this within the Lafayette Square District. However, it is typical of many 19th century uh, buildings that they had attached pergolas. This is an Italian eight building similar to one that's proposed with its historic pergola. It's another example. A couple more. So some of them can be very simple and classical. Some of them can be more elaborate and decorative. So the staff is recommending similarly to what we did last time that uh, a model example be required and that we suggest that the applicant and the owner look into the possibility of a pergola-like structure. Questions? Commissioner, questions? Uh, did the, I didn't see that, did the LSRC 
Oh, the LSRC said that they had reached out a couple of times to the owner and had not had a response. They would like to review the plans. And they support the idea of using a model example for the ordinance. Did they support our decision last time or were they concurred? Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Let's hear from the owner. I did. I'd like for him to speak first, if that's okay. Absolutely. It's your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Steve Coffey, and I was trying to present the material. If you look, do you have the 11 by 17 submittals, or they might even be 8.5 by 11? They had on the submittal photographs of there were multiple other additions that were in the neighborhood in the Lafayette Square Historic District, and they showed what the images were of those other locations. In fairness, several of them were older versions that were built in the probably 70s, 80s, and 90s. There were one that was probably built less than three years ago on Carroll Street, and that was one that had a historic reference of a house on Benton Place down at the very north end of the corner. The modified plan that was submitted tries to use that model as a reference point. We had the one that came to you last year had a glass roof that was similar to what the Compton Heights and Central West End didn't have a Lafayette Square reference point. We had talked about a metal roof as opposed to a glass, and the last submission that was made was actually a shingle roof, not a metal roof, which is historic in that area. So I think the issue was that one of the images, and we do have, I think just in case you didn't have it, can I show that, Jim? This one's on Benton Place, right? That's Benton Place. That's at the north end of Benton Place, and you've got the addition that was certainly probably in the 1930s that was on the very front. On the side or the alley, there's one that was built earlier in its history, probably before 1900, if not when the structure was built. And that was one that was used as a historic reference for the addition that was made or approved on Carroll Street. And what we said is we would follow that profile for this addition. The difference is that, as Jan's going back. I'll get there. Hang on. Okay. That's right. If you. I wanted to show the actual. The building. Sure. That. As a projecting bay. The addition that's already there is rather small. And so when the addition, that's a good picture of it. When the addition that we're looking at adding is placed in front of that, it's about three times the width of the face of that masonry wall. And so it wraps the corner as it turns towards the street. There's an entrance to the basement that is on the side of the building that is facing us to the street. And so the addition was a covering across the back that's about 25 feet in distance and then wraps around the corner as the building projects from the structure. So I know talking to staff, their preference and the model example that I showed you has the entire width of the porch against the face of the original structure. 
Um, in this case, unfortunately, the structure is not the full width, uh, and it's only 10 foot, that the, the projection. That's why we wrapped around to protect the stairs to the basement, as well as to um, respond to the original or to that current addition. Um, the uh, owner has, uh, we've, uh, staff has presented the option of doing a flat pergola uh, to the owner, and the owner has uh, directed me not to pursue that solution uh, because they uh, want or uh, comfortable with the slope, and they feel there's historic reference both historically and as well as currently, that have been approved. Uh, they do want a sheltered patio area so that they can have a barbecue, which is what that addition is, a separate uh, kitchen component, is a barbecue pit. Um, and that area uh, they'd like to have sheltered. So in case of rain or inclement weather, they can still stay outdoors uh, with protection. Um, not that it couldn't be done with a covered area, but they pr aesthetically prefer something that uh, would have a, a slight slope to it. So that's uh, the modifications that we made. We tried to go back and um, find the historic reference that was referenced in other properties and then respond to the, um, the request of the owner for our covered area. Any questions or comments? Uh, I do want to add a few things. Uh, we we continue to make reference to Carol, which I think is probably three years old, but I think the last time I got turned down by the board a year ago, uh, they were in the middle of building one right there on Hickory Street that is almost identical to the one we're requesting here. Uh, and with respect to two items, one, you know, I'm unaware that they tried to reach me and couldn't be. I think they've been in constant contact with my architect. And I haven't gotten a single call, so I don't want anyone to think that I've ignored calls. I think they've been getting them to my architect. Um, secondly, a little unsure as to, uh, there's, I think there was a reference made to non-use of the driveway. The driveway is still going to be useful or the parking pad. Uh, as you can see, because I took some updated pictures in the back of there, the width of the barbecue will probably not be too much greater than what's back there now, and I still park two vehicles right there. Uh, so the issue of the, the parking pad not being usable with the design uh, just would be inaccurate. I mean, still will be able to be used without issue. Uh, that's pretty much all I had to say. I'm a little, a little surprised that new argument being raised about why it's not sufficient. I mean, last time we were here was just about the uh, the glass roof, and so my architect and I went back, looked at it, and came up with a new design. Uh, I'm glad to work with the committee, uh, but I I feel like there's it's a little arbitrary as to what gets denied and what gets passed. With respect to the previous pictures that were shown by uh, Jan. I haven't seen that anywhere in the neighborhood. Um, most of the coverings you will see in the neighborhood are the ones that we're proposing, which is with the slanted roof. Uh, I haven't seen any of those with the pergolo type uh, covering anywhere in the neighborhood. Uh, moreover, I don't think that would help to sustain what my architect has indicated, which is we'd like to be covered from the elements when, it, when and if at all possible, and that wouldn't allow us to do that. So could people just drive by and have barbecue? It, come on by, uh, Richard. We'll have something for you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Tony, did you hear enough to have a question? Uh, questions. Okay. So I have a question for staff, though. So, so it seemed like he's, and I don't remember. I think I missed that meeting when they approved it before. But so, 50, the roof, 50. the roof, the roof was. Is metal now and before it was glass, otherwise it's the same? No. The board said that the, there should be a model example required for the patio cover. Now the problem with the model example proposed, whatever model example that's been proposed, is that there are porches that are on a full wall of a building. This is a porch that will be attached to the small little outcropping. And therefore, they're not appropriate model examples. So the, the idea of the, of the staff was there are some, there is some evidence of pergolas being attached to historic structures in not necessarily traditional ways. That might be a, way, a compromise that everyone could live with, it being a lighter garden-looking structure, rather than trying to impose a porch 
on an element that would never have had a porch. So it wasn't just the glass roof, it was the whole shape and position of the um, original proposal. No, I do have one question, if I may. Uh, it, it, is, is it possible, and I understand we may continue to have the roofing conversation, it sounds like, in, particularly in perpetuity, but is it still possible to have the fence area? Is there an objection to it? I'd like to start the project, and if it comes down to, uh, at some point, then being able to put up the actual uh, structure that goes over the top, I'd like to begin, if possible, at least with the fencing area. I haven't heard an objection from the committee on that issue. The Preservation Board has approved the fence design, and you could apply for that at any time. Okay. And the staff would approve it. Thank you. So I don't have to make a motion to approve that again? Not the fence. Or the pat The fence is new. Okay. The, okay. Well, so I, I move that the board grant preliminary approval to for the kitchen barbecue and reaffirm our fence approval subject to final review of fence design and materials, um, but that we withhold approval of the proposed patio cover um, until staff and the applicant can work out a more appropriate design that is closer to a historic model example, but not necessarily a historic model example. I'll second that. With the fence, we're fine with the idea of a barbecue out there. We'd like it to conform more closely to a model example. Uh, no, we're good with the barbecue. We're not good with the cover. We need them to work a little okay. closer to get to uh, some kind of model example that doesn't really exist. Your barbecue cover? I, I understood that completely. Okay. Good then. There's a motion on the floor. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, calling agenda item B, 1317 Chestnut. 1300 Chestnut, Gold Memorial. Okay. I'm going to be very brief. This is a proposal to do interior and exterior alterations to the Soldiers Memorial Museum. Some of these are Google Shots, which I apologize for, but we couldn't really get close to the building currently. It also includes alterations to the Court of Honor and Memorial Plaza in the block to the south. For so those two blocks, um, there's an area of some alteration. Um, there is a proposal to install a door in a place of a couple of windows on the front elevation, that is the south elevation, behind this statue. Um, it looks as though it's not going to be very visible from the street. It will be once one is up on the terrace, however. So the staff was concerned about that and suggested it, it was proposed to be a fire door for code issues. And since it is the front elevation of the building, we would like to see it brought more into a design conformity with the other openings on the building. And I believe that the applicants have agreed to that, but I'll let them talk about that more. Chestnut Street will be narrowed to one lane to create a stronger con connection between the museum and the Memorial Plaza, which is here. And while the World War I memorial will not be moved, the other memorials will be relocated. And there will be part of the original wall that will become um, a fountain. So I will let the architect tell you a little bit more in detail about the project. But the staff is recommending approval. Okay. Before you start, our, what, what is our role in this process? Um, this is a preliminary design review, as they are um, allowed to have under 64689. There's also part of uh, a, a memorial plaza that's in a city park that would bring the review uh, here. 
the now I understand this is only a preliminary design review and uh, this project which won't be completed until 2018 will involve uh, other permits and uh, so this would not be a full final design review I, I think Barbara it is intended to be a full design review I mean the staff has looked at it and sees no issue with anything other than um, the alteration of the front that window and then there will be another accessibility ramp added to the west side of the building. Um, the Soldier Memorial is also a publicly owned building, and that would also be our jurisdiction. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I meant that. I thought I mentioned that. So uh, you don't envision that any permits will bring them back? I thought it was theoretically. They're possible. getting ready. I believe they're ready to apply for a permit right now. Okay. Yeah. And has Planning Commission acted on it? it has, not that I'm aware of. So where it says here, with the prior written approval of the Planning Commission, the Preservation Board shall. That has not happened yet? It has not happened yet. So, in light of that, or what are we doing here? Well, yeah. I, the way I read, uh, again, it's kind of written, it, it seems like there's two parts. There's the first sentence kind of looks like it might be new stuff, and then the second part is, no such public structure or monument shall be erected or installed in any public place or remove, relocate, or altered until we actually make a recommendation. It says we're supposed to do it within 45 days after it's submitted, so I think that's what we're doing. Okay. And we're not triggered by the planning commission? I don't think so. I think that's, I, I think that would be a maybe a new building or something as opposed to an alteration. So. Barb, you concur? Um. The way I had looked at it, but now that you're um, saying this, th will this go to the planning commission following? Ordinarily, we don't take the alterations of public buildings and parks to the planning commission. I know we haven't in other park issues, but um, nor the museum addition or. <clears throat> All the work in Forest Park, we didn't. We approved that at the Preservation Board. Yeah, certainly, um, Commissioner Richardson's interpretation has been the way the board has proceeded in the last um, decade. Like, Yes, I, I don't see a reason to treat this applicant differently than uh, any of the other similarly situated applicants. Proceed. Proceed. I'm Jim Conrad with Mackey Mitchell Architects. Our firm has been working with the City of St. Louis, Missouri Historical Society, and the Soldiers Memorial Commission on this renovation. So I'm here to explain what we have designed and um, answer any question you may have. And also here to answer questions, if necessary, is Linnea Magnuson, who, who is the superintendent of Soldiers Memorial with the city of St. Louis. And also Karen Goering with the Missouri Historical Society, the director of operations and administration. So um, we have a volunteer to advance slides. Thank you. So this is a rendering you may have seen in the newspaper and on the news. It shows an aerial view of the Soldiers Memorial. Is it okay if I step away and use my pointer? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, the Soldiers Memorial Building, which was um, the World War I and Memorial constructed in 1938, and also the Soldiers Memorial, I mean, excuse me, the Court of Honor, which is the World War II Memorial built in 1945, so um, next, please. So the way I'm going to organize this presentation is, first of all, kind of give you an overall picture of what we're doing, and then take the Soldiers Memorial block first, and then the Court of Honor block second. So the Memorial Plaza, which was established in the 1930s, actually includes seven city blocks. But this renovation only deals with two, which are the ones I just mentioned for the Soldiers Memorial and for the Court of Honor. 
Go ahead. So the uh, Pelker Park, where the Fireman's Memorial is, Kaufman Park, uh, the Schiller Block, Eternal Flame Park, and then the one to the north, the Soldier's Memorial, we won't be touching those at all. So our proposal is only for these two city blocks. This is a view of Soldier's Memorial from Market Street looking across and over the Court of Honor. Uh, the shaft on the right-hand side is by um, Hillis Arnold, uh, the sculptor. Uh, then this is the southwest corner of Soldier's Memorial. So this is a corner of Chestnut and 14th Street. This uh, the building was by Moran, Russell, and Crowell. Very, very cleverly designed and very well executed. After 78 years, the building's still in very good condition other than the mechanical systems. Uh, the four allegorical sculptures at the museum were sculpted by a St. Louis sculptor, Walker Hancock. They're just beautiful. So this is an overall site plan of the two city blocks. As I mentioned, the north block being the World War I Memorial, Soldiers Memorial, which is both a museum and a memorial. And then the block south of Chestnut, the World War II Memorial, is more of a park-like setting. Um, which uh, we will be showing you the plans for that block as well. Now, the, the Soldiers Memorial block, the, the approach that we're taking to this renovation is truly a preservation approach. So we're going to keep as much of the fabric throughout the building, throughout the site as we can, and only replace those which are in poor condition. So the original building, uh, immediately around the building, actually had brick pavers. Sometime in the past, those brick pavers were replaced on the north side and the south side with strips of granite with concrete infill. Uh, on the east side and the west side, the bricks are in very poor condition, so we are replacing those to match the current paving on the north and the south sides. Um, about 10 years ago, they installed a ramp on the north side of the building to increase accessibility. And what we're proposing is, in addition to that ramp, a second ramp, which is at the southwest corner. So that when people part, well, first of all, we have um, four handicapped spaces planned on Pine Street to the north. So those will be very conveniently located to the existing ramp. On the Court of Honor block, we have uh, two p accessible parking spaces on 13th and two on 14th. So anybody who uh, parks in those spaces and then wants to go to the Soldiers of the Memorial can then use this ramp very conveniently to get into that building. The building has never been air conditioned and to bring it up to modern museum standards we will be introducing air conditioning and rather than putting a cooling tower on the roof we are going to be constructing a pit at the northwest corner of the site so the fluid cooler will be located in that pit and not visible to the public. All of the landscaping around the memorial will be replaced. It's uh, generally quite old and the trees are not in that good a condition. Then Chestnut Street currently is 72 feet wide and in an effort to better bridge Soldiers Memorial with the Court of Honor, we've had preliminary conversations with the Streets Department and they've approved preliminarily reducing Chestnut Street to be 24 feet wide. That will allow for one lane of eastbound vehicular traffic as well as continuing the bike route that currently goes uh, on Chestnut Street. So that will uh, make it much easier, much more easily uh, traversed for people who go back and forth between the Soldiers Memorial and the Court of Honor. Now in the building, again, we're um, approaching this as a preservation project, so we're, re we're retaining as much of the original fabric as possible. Um, the biggest change we are making is, is in the basement where there really isn't much left of what was originally constructed in the 1930s. And what we're going to do is be opening up the basement to use as ex additional exhibit areas. So we'll have a total of 5,000 square feet of exhibit space there as well as um, new toilet rooms that are accessible to the disabled and a student, or, I mean, a, a uh, staff break lounge. 
So this is the uh, existing conditions in the basement, uh, most recently used as not only storage for Soldier Memorial, but also the City Emergency Management Agency that has since moved to the new police uh, building. On the first floor, again, uh, when the renovation is complete and people visit the building, we like to think that they won't really notice too much that's been done because we are truly trying to preserve as much as possible that is there now and still insert the new mechanical systems um, and improve the exhibits. For example, right now there's no technology included in the exhibits, but that's really, you know, media and technology is more and more important in exhibit design. And in a minute we'll show you some interior photographs, but we are going to um, clean and restore uh, the cenotaph, which has the names of the people who gave their lives in service to World War I. In the two exhibit areas, uh, the center cylindrical display case will be uh, retained, cleaned, and refurbished. The other display cases, um, which do not meet accessibility requirements and which don't have tempered glass for safety, will be removed and replaced. And, um, Linnea has been uh, finding a home for those. There are three different recipients that may take those cases. The, uh, the uh, galleries, I guess we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is the cenotaph within the loggia, and uh, this is um, the location of the memorial for the people who gave their lives. In the background, you can see the entrance to the exhibit halls, which are symmetrical on both sides of the building. We will replace some of the terrazzo tile pavement because it's in poor condition um, due to the weather exposure over the years. And the other thing we've been um, experimenting with is adding some lighting at the cenotaph because the names of the service people are black on black. It's very hard to read. So we're excited about trying to introduce some new lighting to make that more legible. Also on the ends, there's these beautiful wreaths that were carved into the stone cenotaph, which will be highlighted. Then directly above the cenotaph is the Gold Star Mosaic. It was um, built by the Ravenna Mosaic Company, which is now out of business. But they also did a lot of work at the Cathedral Basilica. So it's just amazing the, the good condition that this mosaic is still in. There's a few pieces that need to be replaced, but generally it's in great condition. This is one of the exhibit galleries, the, the West Gallery. And you can see that these are beautiful rooms, uh, terrazzo pavement. Uh, marble, wainscoting all the way around, uh, beautiful windows that are decorative, as well as allowing um, good visibility. We will be working with um, um, minimizing or uh, totally excluding, I should say, the ultraviolet radiation that is damaging to the artifacts. But you can see the cylindrical case that I mentioned that will be retained and refurbished. Uh, this is a view of the outside of the windows. To improve thermal performance, we will be installing storm windows, but we'll put the storm windows on the inside so that people from the outside of the building will still be able to see the decorative Art Deco motif in the, in the grills. Then Jan mentioned the, the new door. Um, one of the um, probably the most important parts of life safety improvements to the building is adding this additional stair. Currently, there's only one stairway in the building. So this is the location of the exit door for the new stair. It's currently the windows in the security office. So we'll be removing the stone directly below these windows, carving the stone so it has the same kind of radius at the jams. So there's a rendering um, next slide that will show uh, what we're proposing is to keep the doors very plain, paint those to match the stone, um, and uh, Jan's already mentioned that you know she's asked us to study uh, a more decorative approach. We will do that. Uh, we still feel that this is appropriate, so we can discuss that later. Uh, the next slide does show that when you're near the building, those doors will be behind this column and not visible until you go up the steps and look down the colonnade. The next slide again is from Market Street, and the doors will be sorry my screen will be behind the Statue of Courage, so again, not visible because it's in the wall to, on the inside of the colonnade. This is a plan of the second floor. Uh, currently, it's predominantly assembly spaces, and they, uh, we will maintain those uses. This slide shows the new stairway that we'll be adding 
for improved life safety. It also shows that we're adding a new elevator for convenience because the floor on the west side of the building is three feet lower than the floor on the east side of the building. So to improve accessibility to disabled people, we'll be adding a second elevator. The um, assembly hall is shown here. Again, when we finish our renovation, it'll look very much the same with two exceptions. One is that the fixed seating will be removed. This room, it, it's a great room, but it's very seldom used because it's so rigid and inflexible. So our proposal is to remove the fixed seating and use tables and chairs so that it can be much more usable for a variety uh, of uses. The second thing we'll, we will do is maintain the dais with the, the desk at the front of the room. And we will add a ramp so that people can get up the three steps to the dais. Other than that, the room will be very much the same. This is the stairway that does um, bridge between the lower floor and the upper floor, about three feet and change. And because the toilet rooms are on the upper uh, side of the stair, our proposal is to add a chairlift. So we have, um, next uh, slide please. Uh, well, uh, as an interim, Soldiers Memorial did install this ramp, but it's like three times steeper than allowable by the Americans with Disabilities Act. So. Uh, what we are proposing, next slide, is a chairlift that can be um, very easy to use and to get people from the lower level to the upper level. This photograph is just an example. You can see the U.S. Bank logo, or I guess that's Bank of America logo on the back wall. So our rendering uh, next is uh, to put that lift at the landing. Um, when, this is the door to the assembly hall. This is to the existing stairway. So a person would go up the lift and then um, down the corridor. There's a lot of really cool features in the second floor. We'll be retaining this phone booth, uh, very much um, a rarity nowadays. Um, be a great place for people to duck out of meetings and take a phone call. Then uh, one of the most beautiful rooms, uh, ironically to me, is the toilet rooms. Uh, they have these great um, vitrolite wall clad partitions and toilet compartments and we had a consultant look at those walls and say they were like the best he's ever seen so we'll be doing minimal changes to those Dunn? compartments i'm sorry tim dunn tim dunn right right he was disappointed there wasn't much work there for him <laughs> then this is uh, just a photograph of the existing stairway which will be retained uh, the second floor, we will also have some storm windows. Uh, here we'll, of course, be removing the window unit and putting the storm windows on the outside because there's not a very deep sill on the inside. We have been experimenting with uh, lighting to uh, better accentuate these uh, wonderful sculptures. Um, and if you go to the next one, um, also uplighting the current, uh, the, uh, the columns and the colonnade. Uh, there is some uplighting now, but this will be much uh, more permanent and efficient. So that's the uh, Soldier's Memorial Block. So next we'll look at the Court of Honor Block. And before we leave the rendering, though, I just wanted to point out some of the main features. Currently, this is a lawn area. So in order to make this more park-like uh, memorial more inviting and more contemplative, we're proposing a reflecting pool. And then next to that, in what is currently the location of a planter, a spray fountain that is, we call it the five branches fountain because there are five branches of service and five groups of jets. So the, the, the really great thing about this is that it will provide some sound so that when people are in this more park-like setting, it will help mask out the traffic noise from Market Street. So in the, in the Court of Honor, because we are reducing the width of Chestnut Street, we're able to create this new central lawn area, which will uh, be a, a really great benefit for a number of programs for the, um, for the memorial. And directly to the south of that, of course, is the new reflecting pool I just mentioned and the spray fountain. We're doing very little within the Court of Honor other than upgrading the pavement, which is in very poor condition. One of the things we are doing, though, is Right now, the planter is an L-shaped planter. And we will leave an opening in what is currently the planter because for the accessible route for people who, who do have disabilities, right now they would have to go all the way around to this entrance. 
So by opening this up, people who are at the Soldiers Memorial can more easily get into the, the Court of Honor. I mentioned that we'll have a couple of parking spaces for the disabled on either side. Now this is a shot of the existing um, shaft in the memorial. And, and then next, um, the memorial itself. Now within the Court of Honor, the um, Vietnamese uh, memorial was in, installed later as well as the Korean War Memorial. Those will be relocated. And if you don't mind backing up just for a couple of slides, yes. So what we are doing is adding additional memorial walls to the east and west of the central lawn area to restore the Court of Honor to the World War II Memorial and then have a fitting place on either side of that lawn area, not only for uh, Vietnam and Korea, but also Iraq, Afghanistan, and future conflicts. Don't, don't say too much room. Yeah, yes. Uh, within the Court of Honor, as I mentioned, we'll be having the new um, reflecting pool on the walls themselves where the names of the service people are, are um, memorialized. We will be replacing the lighting because it's in relatively poor condition after 50 years. Uh, this is the Vietnam Memorial we already talked about. Uh, the, the three tablets you see here, even though we'll remove this, we'll keep the tablets in, and incorporate those into the new memorial walls, which I think is the next slide. Yes, yeah, so on either side of the central lawn area, we'll have these new memorial walls, uh, two of which are already dedicate, going to be dedicated to Korea and Vietnam. And that is the presentation, so I'll take any questions you may have. Bike parking, if you go to the site plan, I can show you that. The second one? That's good, okay. So the bike path, you may recall, is on, I'm sorry, um, Chestnut Street. So we'll have bicycle parking at this corner and at this corner, and we'll be working with whomever is um, wanting to know more about the number of racks. Is there something special with the crosswalks that you're doing too? Or? Uh, these crosswalks? No, the uh, oh, yeah. The in, in the inter intersections. We actually have a meeting scheduled with the streets department um, very soon to talk about how, what they would like to have. The, we, we're, we're proposing that type, which was used on the east side of City Hall, so we'll see what their preference is. Welcome. Thank you. Your legal theory, your motion. Uh, I move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the proposed alterations with the stipulation that the final drawings, materials, and colors be reviewed by staff. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Let's do agenda item C. Okay, this is a new app for a uh, single family new construction over in Shaw. Quickly, uh, this is the site. Um, the street is mostly four families, um, but this is going to be a single family that kind of has the same mass and scale as the four families. This is the location. Of course, this faces the interstate. And um, from reference, it's uh, one block to the east of that larger UIC development we just uh, approved a few months back. This is a streetscape shot showing the uh, building and its uh, As you see, I mean, quickly to go through the standards, it, the massing is fine, the height is fine, the fenestration lines up. Um, we've worked with the uh, architect to tweak a few details, and they've uh, done that willingly, um, from the doors and some window uh, details. And I think we've asked where they've done. Uh, the, the design was. Uh, uh, done in conjunction with the Neighborhood Association and Tower Grove South. Um, they're working together on this. So, the neighborhood's vetted the, 
we've seen it, and uh, we recommend approval on it. I'll go through real quickly. Here is the uh, elevation. And it's context. Quick return to the side will match the distance between the buildings. Here's the rear elevation. A site plan showing the setback will align with neighboring properties. And again, here's the site. So again, we recommend approval on it. Uh, if you have any questions? I recommend that the uh, preservation, me, preservation Board grant approval to the proposed new construction with the stipulation that the details and specifications submitted to the Cultural Resources Office for review and final plans and exterior materials are approved by the Cultural Resources Office. Second. So any discussion? Hearing none. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're going to take a two minute break. Okay, commissioners, before I call agenda item D, Commissioner Richardson, do you have a motion? I would move that we defer item D and E to our June meeting. Second. For that question, commissioners, why why would we do that? Uh, to get a full forum. Agreed. Do you have anything to add? Well, I understand the motion because the full action of the board. and fair hearing would point toward the quorum being present. Um, I, I, you know. Are there any consequences to deferring? Sort of a matter of first impression. Well, Councilor, isn't it item D? We already voted on this one in March, and it was an issue of that they received notice, short a short uh, lead time on the notice, and so that's they're asking us to rehear. So we kind of already have a unique situation there. Yeah, I mean, item D didn't have to be on the agenda. This was, but it is. So the board would have to take some sort of action to actually hear it today, which I was prepared to say. So um, we may want to put the applicants on the record and ask if they'd like to begin their hearing and, and come back in June or if they'd prefer to hold any testimony until the board is, is here in full. Well, I guess with item G, if, if, if this is right, if we're rehearing it, don't I kind of need a motion to? Yeah, it would, it would require action from the board, and that is a point specific to item D. Because no appeal was filed from the um, default, if you will. Right. So they're not actually entitled to a full hearing today, but the action would be taken by the board, okay. which, yeah, we've done. It hasn't happened yet. So with item D, again, since we can't legally reconsider it or rehear it anyway, but if the applicant wants to speak to it today, we could hear them, but we can't actually take any action anyway. Yes, that so, is correct. I mean, it's really up to them. Do they want to be heard this month and next month, or just wait till next yeah, month? Yeah, I agree. I would, uh, yeah, I agree. I would post that, posit that. Okay, Mr. Veal. Um, 
say I'm going to have to come back uh, next month and repeat it. I would prefer just to wait. Uh, the other thing is uh, I have some pictures, and I wasn't aware that we could uh, have slides, so I can, that'll give me time to make some slides up. Okay. You are taken care of. See you next month. <laughs> now. Okay. Um, Agenda item E. That was quick. Report. Commissioners, there's a motion on the floor. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Motion mail for the next day. Yeah, Okay. Oh, okay. At the request of the applicant. Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Another motion. I move to adjourn. Second. Second.